Okay, so I highly recommend that you play with the app because it gives you a gut feeling of what's going on. And in physics, at that level, well, what matters is really to understand the concept. And then the rest is just algebra. So here you have a power supply, 30 volt. And that means that every Coulomb of charge flowing here uh, will uh, burping out, I mean being burped out, will have 30 Joule. So every Coulomb of charge will have a potential energy of 30 Joule. And then here I have three loads. Each load has some resistance. So here I have picked the same resistance for each one of them. Now, first of all, I want you to notice that the current will be the same no matter where and I try to measure the current because the current is the amount of coulombs, right? the amount of coulombs going through that membrane every second. So here it says one amp, that means every second you're going to have one coulomb going through and you can measure it here through that load, through this load, I have to put it here. Oh, I'm looking here, of course. <laughs> it's going to be one amp, and here, of course, it's going to be one amp, and here it's going to be one amp everywhere. Now, if you measure the voltage, then the voltage will depend on the resistance. So here I have the same resistance everywhere, and I have 30 volt to split into three loads. And because the three loads have the same resistance, you're going to measure the same voltage. So what, what's the voltage you expect here? In each one of them, it's going to be 10. Very good, right? So you start with 30, you're going to have 10 across this one. If I measure the voltage across that one, it's going to be 10. Okay, It has the same appetite because it has the same resistance. And if I measure the voltage here, it's going to be 10. But it has to... If you measure the whole voltage here, yeah, it has to be 30, okay? because it has to add up to 30, conservation of energy. If you have 30 joule per second here, yeah, you better have 30 joule per second uh, per coulomb as well. However, what do you think is going to happen if now I increase that load here? So instead of having 10 ohms, maybe I'm going to have a 20 ohms. So let's make it 20 ohms. What do you think is going to happen to the voltage? Remember ohms law? Voltage equals resistance times current. The voltage across a load equals the resistance times the current, right? So because the resistance went up, what's going to happen to the voltage? Up. up, ohms law, V equals Ri. Okay, so it's a proportion. Ohms law says that V equals Ri. So if you keep the current the same, you multiply, let's say, the resistance by 3, the voltage is going to be multiplied by 3. Okay, so the voltage here, it's going to be... Um, 15 volt, right? How do I know? Because you multiply the resistance 20 times 0 0.75 and you get 15. So how much is left for these other ones? If this one takes 15, how much is left for both of them? 15 for both, right? So let's let's measure. It's like measuring height. So 15 for both, and now they both have the same resistance. So they have the same appetite. So if it's 15 for both, so for one, what's going to be the voltage? Seven and a half, very good. You see how it works? So 
it works like a voltage drop. It's like measuring height. Okay? Is that clear? So for the same current, if you increase the resistance, like something horrible is going to happen, if I have a big, big resistance here, I'm going to steal everything from others. So, so here, that was the place we stopped at, and I told you that one way to understand how it works you start with a power supply for 1.5 volt, that will be your height. You have three loads. Each load is 10 ohm, 10 ohm, 10 ohm. And you see that it's like having three little zigzags. So you can replace those little zigzags by one big zigzag, and you just add up the resistance, which is 30 ohms. And that way you can find the current. And the current, because you apply Ohm's law, equals the voltage divided by the resistance, so you find the current. And the current is the same everywhere. You can verify Ohm's law here, too, if you do uh, RV equals 10 times 0 0.05, you get 0 0.5. Okay? So here, I gave you another example. You have three loads. Each one of them is five ohms. Okay, so you can verify ohms law here. Five times two is 10 volts. Five times two is 10 oh, oh, volts, right? The current is two ohms. Now I can replace those three resistors by one single one. I just need to add the resistances Right, so I have 15 ohms. So I have 15 ohms, 30 volt, and you get the same current. Is that clear? So that's going to be the trick to find the current flowing in a circuit in series. Okay, so it's easier. I'm going to show you some example. And uh, here, the same thing with the... Oh, I just wanted to show you here that the voltage is always larger. The voltage is always larger across the load with the largest resistance. So here you have a resistance of 25 ohms. The voltage across will be larger than a 15 ohms one. Is that clear? And you can play with it. Okay, so let's try to do this one. I have a 10 ohms and a 40 ohms, and I have a power supply of 10 volts. You don't know the current, and uh, let's say the question is find the current. And I will show you how we do that step by step. So 100 volt is the power supply, 10 ohms and 40 ohms. So you can do it this way, so one, 100 volt, that's your power supply, and you have a 10, what did I say, 20 or 10? I don't know, 40 and 10, okay. So 10 ohm and uh, 40 ohms. And the current is flowing. the same current everywhere and the question is find the current and I told you one way I like to do it like it's an engineering way you can think of voltage like a height and you see the current is flowing like in a pipe and here you have your 10 ohm and then here you have your 40 ohm and then you go back into the ground and you think of water flowing so it's going to be the same water flowing into the ground and now we know we need to find the current and there is a trick it's called the mathematical trick okay so that will be just to find the current so what we do we replace those two loads by one what do you think the resistance should be 50, does it make sense? It's like you have 10 zigzag and then 40 zigzag. 
So you replace that by a big zigzag. That load will be 50. And then it's going to be easy because what's going to be the voltage drop between here and there? If, if you take a measuring tape, what's, what's the difference between here and there? Here you have zero and here you have 100, right? Think of voltage like height. So here you have 100 volt okay, between here and base. And let's say you want to find the current, then you use Ohm's law. So I like to do the drawing this way, because that way you think of that line like a multiplication. So this times that equals 100. Okay, remember, V equals Ri. So resistance times current equals voltage. So the current is going to be something times 50 equals 100. Two, does it make sense, right? So now we know the current is two. That, my friend, is called the equivalent resistance. It's, a, it's called the equivalent resistance because you can replace the two by a single one. So it's called the equivalent resistance. It's just a mathematical trick that we use to find the current flowing. Okay? And then we take a step back here. Okay? And now we know that the current is 2 amp. And again, we use that line as a multiplication. So, what's going to be the voltage drop here? It's going to be 20, very good, because Ohm's law. Okay, the current is 2, the resistance is 10, so that's going to be 20 volt. So the voltage drop here is going to be 20. What do you think the voltage drop is going to be here? 80, very good, right? You, you don't really, you can do 2 times 40, or you know that you start with 100, and then boom, that's called the voltage drop. You are dropping by... 20, so there is 80 left. See how it works? So then if I go back to here, and if I have a voltmeter, I know that here it's going to be 20 volt. And if I measure, you remember voltage is a property of two points, so here I expect 80 volt. And as I have said before, the one with the most resistance is taking the most voltage, okay? It's stealing all the energy. Because remember, voltage is the energy per coulomb. Even though the current will be the same everywhere, this one is taking more energy. And of course, if I, took a, if I take a voltmeter here, I'm going to measure 100. And if I open my circuit here, if I put a, if I put a volt uh, amp meter to measure the current, that I'm going to measure two amps. I will be measuring two amps here, and I will be measuring two amps here, and I will be measuring two amps here. Okay, so this is called the um, resistance, equivalent resistance. Okay. Let's find the power consumed by the 10 ohms. So look at your equations. You can use different kind of equations. The V times I always work. That will be the energy consumed by that load. That load can be a heater. I will use a heater. I have no heater at home. That makes me very sad. But... Um, it could be a toaster or it could be a light bulb. So V, so that will be V times I, that will be, so 20 times 2 is going to be 40 watt, right? So 40 joules per second. And the power consumed by the 41, 
it's going to be 80 times 2 here because it's 80 volts so it's going to be 160 watts is that right so how much is consumed all together so the energy consumed together is going to be 160 plus 40 it's going to be 200 is that right i'm not doing mistakes here right that's consumed now if i want to find the power produced by the power supply it's going to be v times i so 100 times 2 is 200 watt and that makes sense because whatever is produced has to be consumed energy is always conserved right it's, it's never lost it's always transformed you know who said that he's very famous i don't know if you take chemistry very famous guy he's he's the father of modern chemistry lavoisier very famous for saying nothing is lost nothing is created everything is transformed is recycled before before he came along people thought that you know how spiders they when when they have eggs you know and then you see all those baby spiders you know flying around so they thought that it came out of nowhere like it was like a spontaneous life and then they thought when they saw iron getting rusty they thought that rust came out of nowhere and he was the one who showed that rust comes from oxygen oxiding iron lavoisier forgot antoine lavoisier of course he was french antoine lavoisier very very famous guy unfortunately at the time you could not find the fiu that will support your work or your research you could not ask for a grant from the government you know so you had to pay for your own research so you had to find a job that provide enough money so at the time in 1780 in france he was a tax collector for the king and that was not the right time to be a tax collector for the king to work for the irs at the time because you know what happened to the king of france huh be, be beheaded yes right right you are right beheaded right um guillotine so what happened to lavoisier <laughs> same thing and and someone said you know it took 100 years oh, that's a british guy british people have a lot of humor so it took a hundred years to grow such a head but it took like half a second to lose it but of course i'm laughing because it was so long ago but of course it's not funny it's very sad because the guy was very smart so that's what happened to antoine lavoisier so you know if don't be a tax collector <laughs> So that's what happened to him. There was a whole story about him because he was victim of a revenge. Like someone hated him because he was a fake scientist. And then Antoine Lavoisier said, you're fake, you're fraud. So he didn't like it. So he went and uh, accused uh, Lavoisier to be a royalist, you know, to work for the king and to be an enemy of the revolution. And that's how he lost his, his head. Conclusion. Connection, connection, connection. <laughs> Choose your uh, friends wisely. So that was a parenthesis because I know you you all have to take uh, chemistry. Okay, so let's let's apply the same idea and try to do this one. He was beheaded by something called the guillotine. And guillotine is named after Mr. Guillotine. He was also French.
Yeah, so the, you can help each other, can make a drawing, a schematic. It doesn't matter which one you put the first, you can even throw in there a switch. Okay, the same idea. So the equivalent resistance is going to be? Nine ohms. Nine ohms, very good. And then you can imagine that the current is flowing. It's like a pipe. It, this is uphill, uphill, downhill, uphill here flowing from high level of energy to low level of energy, that's going to be I. You imagine here you have a multiplication. So that's ground. You can imagine this is ground. So that has to be 12 volts. And you, mul you multiply. So 9 times I equals 12. So I equals... Uh, is that right? It's 1.3 repeating. Yes? So once you have found that, you go back one step. And now we know that the current everywhere is going to be 1.3 repeating. So then we can find the... Uh, Voltage drop here, voltage drop here, you just multiply. So six times, so that will be 6.3 repeating, and that will be, um, no, that's not right. It's going to be what? Six times 1.3. Huh? 7.8, thank you. And here it's going to be, has to be 12 minus 7.8. For, yeah, 12 minus 7.8. Huh? Yeah, it's 8. It's 8? Yeah, 8. 8 point what? No, it's not making just 8 even. Oh, 8 even? And then 12. Okay, so if you neglect the, oh, because you, you do the repeating thing. Okay, so eight. Okay. If you leave all the three, it's so it means if you take one point three 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 three. You can also just do like twelve. Okay. Oh, you can do mixed number, right? One and one third. But you're right, it's, it's easier. Okay, so 8 plus 4 is 12, so we're good. So find the power dissipated in each resistance. So power by the 6 ohm. So remember, power is always VI. That always stands. However, for resistance, for load that will behave like a resistance, we can do also RI square and V square R. That's just for resistance. This is true for resistance for everything. So 6 ohm uh, V is a times 1.3 repeating. Ten point seven repeating. It's ten point six, 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 uh, 
So 10.7 Watt. And the power of 3 ohms, it's going to be 4 times 1.3 repeating. I rounded 5.3. 5.3. 5.2? I didn't put the repeating. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I guess for the problem, I'm not going to give you repeating. <laughs> but that's the idea. Okay? And um, if, you, if you find the total power delivered by the battery, so it's going to add them up, right? You're going to add, so that's going to be uh, 12. That's going to be 12 volt times 1.3 watt. So that's going to be the power delivered by the battery, which is equal to the sum of the power consumed. Huh? That's what Lavoisier said. Everything is recycled. Okay, any question? Okay, let's try. Let's try you can talk to each other. Oh, I don't know. L let's do number four. And all the problems they are in. Um, I have a tutorial for them. And it's good you are in person because I don't know why with this class, the morning class never freeze. But this class. So you can help each other. So I have 10 of them. So I can replace those 10 by a big one that I call the equivalent resistance or the effective resistance sometimes it's called. And I know that the voltage drop is 120. So the equivalent resistance is going to be Two forty, two forty what? Two forty. Um, two forty ohm. So that's two forty ohms, right? So if this is two forty ohms, and you have ten of them, very good. So each one of them is very good. Twenty four ohms. So this is a very bad setting here because if one bulb dies, uh, exactly. So you don't want to buy those because they are the cheap one. You want those who are in parallel. So if one burn, the other one will not burn. And especially if you have a cat at home, they will go after. Okay, let's see if you have another uh, nice one. Hello, number five. 
So we have a 10 ohm here. Oh, there's nothing special here. So the voltage drop is 15 volt. How much? 1.5. Do you all find 1.5? Amps. Okay, and maybe I decide that 1.5 is too too big. So you have different way to do it. So I'm gonna add another resistance. So I'm gonna add another resistance R here because I want that to be 0 0.5 amps. So, and the question is, what should I put here? What should I put here? Such as the current is divided by... Very good, 30 total. So R it has to be 20, excellent. Maybe you go too fast. So it's going to be 15 volts here if you want. One way to do it, you can find equivalent here. And you want 0.5. Amps. So you want to have a 30 ohms resistance here to get 0 0.5 because 0 0.5 times 30 is 15. You already have 10. So the way to achieve that is to have a 20 ohm resistance there. Okay. You see how it works? Now, you can find the voltage drop. The voltage drop here is going to be 10 times 0 0.5. That will be 5 volt. So the voltage drop here is going to be 10 volt. So you see that what I was showing you at the beginning is that the largest resistance, if you have the same current, will, will uh, drop the greatest voltage. Bigger resistance, bigger voltage. You, you can think of that, that because if you have a big resistance, it's like having a big zigzag, so it takes more of a height, so bigger voltage drop. That's one way. OK? Okay, let's do this one quickly. So we have uh, 10 ohms, and again, the, the order doesn't matter, okay? You don't have to put the big one first, the small one first. They all obey ohm's law. So what's going to be the equivalent resistance? Um, 30, you said? Yeah, ohms. So what's going to be the current? Very good. 3 amps. So then you take one step back. So that's going to be 3 amps. OK? And then you can multiply to find the voltage drop. So that's going to be 10 times 3 is 30 volt. 
and then here we have 5 times 3 is 15 and then 15 times 3 is huh? 45, 45, thank you. You see that it doesn't matter, it, even if you put the 10 ohms first, you think you're going to trick ohms low, but no, because it's the biggest resistance that will take the biggest voltage drop. At the end, you have to drop by 90 volt altogether. See how it works? Okay. And this one you can do in your head. 15. Okay, now let's do it quickly. Let's do number one. So you have 15 of them. So times 15. So if you have 15 of um, 10 ohms, what's going to be the resistance? Yeah, 150. The current is I. So I, the current is just 30 divided by 150. 1, 2 amps. So that's going to be 1, 2 amps. So each one is 10, 10, so each voltage drop, it's going to be 2 volt, because 2 volt times 15 is 30, okay? Any question? You have homework for... Uh, Tonight, or I think it's tonight. Tonight, and there is a pop quiz. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Th there is something super cool, and we call that voltage divider. And I'm just gonna give you the recipe. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to prove it. It's, you can prove it. You, you can do the computation. But um, it's, I, I will tell you after why it's, it's used. Okay, it's in electronics. If you do some electronics, if you, if you work on circuit, it's something very famous and it's called voltage divider. So you see here you are familiar to that, right? So you have the power supply and you have two resistance, R1 and R2. So you have a voltage drop here that we, you're going to call V1 and you have a voltage drop here that you're going to call V2. Okay? And that's your power supply. So there is a, here that will be your V2. And it's called V out because sometimes it can be used to power something else. But the voltage drop is V2. So the formula goes like this. V2, okay, that voltage drop is to the, and you, you're going to help me, okay? You can ask your guts. Guts have brain. So V2 is to the whole thing, so to the power supply, what, what, very good, R2 is to R1 plus R2, okay, so V2 is to the whole thing, what R2 is to the whole thing, so the the relationship between the R will be the same as the voltage. So V2 is to V in what 
R2 is to the sum. So this is called a voltage divider. And that's very convenient. For example, if you work with Arduino, which is really cool. And for example, you have a power supply of 6 volt and 6 volt is too much for a sensor. You want to divide that voltage by 2. And maybe you want 3 volt. All you have to do is to have the same resistance here than you have there. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, an application of that. And uh, George, that comes back to your question. Can we use uh, resistance to decrease the voltage? Yes, we do. But we do only for a small circuitry. When you use Arduino or sensors, like 5 volt, you can divide that and get 2 volt, right? So what's happening, you are removing energy here, and that's what is left. So let's let's try to do an um, example. 12 volt, so let's take an example. So we have 12 volt here. And let's say R1 is 100 ohms. And... R2 is 300 ohms. Okay, and the equation, without doing the computation that we did before, I want to go fast, right? I, I could do it the same way we did before, but I want to go fast. I want to use my equation really, really fast. What's going to be the voltage drop here? So you use the same equation, okay? So... That's going to be V out is to V in, and here we call that V out. What? R2 is to R1 plus R2. So we call that R2 and we call that R1. So can you find R2? So this here relative to that is the same ratio as this is to that. Same thing, right? The height, the small height to the big height is the same thing as the small resistance here out to the big resistance. So what do you get? 9. Nine. It has to be smaller, right? Uh, 300. Okay, so V out over 12 equals, because it's 3 fourths, right? You, you can do it in your head because 300 out of 100 is 3 fourths. So V out equals 3 fourths out of 12. So it's 9 volt. And you do it very quickly. So this is called the voltage divider because if you select carefully, wisely, the resistors, you're going to bring down the voltage. Okay? So 300 is 3 fourths of uh, 400. So likewise, that voltage will be 3 fourths of 12. Is that clear? So I, I don't know if you like to tinker and to play, but I, I love Arduino, okay? That was my, my hobby, Arduino. So Arduino has always a 5 volt power supply, like my laptop. That's why you connect Arduino to your laptop. And sometimes you have to work with sensors who are only 2.5 volt, so you will use or 3 volt, so you use a voltage divider to get from 5 to 3 volt. Okay, with Arduino you can build a 3D printer for nothing, like it's very cheap. You can build all kind of stuff, and it's very easy because all you have to do is to go on YouTube and have tutorials. Arduino is a microcontroller.
Okay, the, so for example, number six, you can apply the same thing. Okay. And it works also if you want to find the voltage across. Across uh, the other one, of course. So you have 45 volts here. And then you have a resistance 5. And then you have a resistance 10. And that's going to be the voltage drop here. We call that V out. Okay, and then you like you write your uh, ratio small or out of out of big equals small out of big. Mm -hmm. Thirty. Uh, do you all agree? Okay, so this is 30. So how much is left here? Isn't that cool? Okay. So this one is more complicated to understand. Okay, so you, you all have experienced that if you have a battery, little by little, it's losing energy, right? And then you have to change it. And as it's, it's losing energy, if you touch it, you, you find out that it's getting hot. And if anything that gets hot, that means it has a resistance inside that is stealing the energy. So inside those batteries here, the cells, you always have a sneaky resistance hiding in the dark yeah, that you are not aware of and it's stealing energy from you. So even though it says 1.5 volt, you're going to have some voltage drop from that 5 ohms resistance such as that here you are not getting your 1.5 5 volt you get less so one way i can explain that but if you do a drawing it's very easy to understand but that's how batteries work and that's that's why as batteries get older especially if it's a dollar store batteries you know the resistance inside increases so you don't get the energy that you are supposed to get as it gets older so here it's supposed to be 1.5 volt, okay? And you think it's 1.5 volt because you, you take your power, uh, your voltmeter like I did last time in class and you find 1.5. What you are not aware of is that inside here, sneaking, you know, hiding from your eyes, you have a 5 ohm resistance here. And you don't see it because it's part of your battery, okay? So that's your battery here. You cannot look inside. You cannot open it. And then, innocent that you are, you, you put your 20 ohms light bulb, and you say, okay, I'm going to get 1.5 here because that's what it says. You are unaware that you have a 5 ohm here inside here. So, you see that the current here, I, let's find that current I. It's going to be what? 25? 45? The current? Wait, so you have 1.5 volt. It has to be smaller. What, what's the equivalent resistance? Okay, 25. So, so it's going to be what? 0.06. Are you sure? Everyone is sure? 
So the voltage drop is 1.5. So the current here is 1.5 divided by 25. That's going to be 0 0.6. There is no more decimal. No. Just 0 0.06. Do you all agree? Right? The resistance is hiding there, but it's still there. I cannot ignore it. So when I find the equivalent resistance, I have to take into account that will be 25. So that's going to be 0 0.06 amps, right? So now find the voltage drop across each of them. So here you have 20 times 0 0.06. Huh? 1.6? No, 1.2. So how much is dropping here? 1.3. Look at that. It's stealing from me 0 0.3 volt. And I have only for my poor load 1.2 volt. There is nothing I can do about it because this is the battery here. I cannot open it. Okay, I cannot remove it. That that's what it is. So that means that the voltage, the voltage, voltage available to the load, it's it it depends on the current. And the current depends on the resistance here. Now it's 1.2 volt. It's not 1.5. More current that I'm going to get, more more um, stealing here are happening. So I'm losing 0 0.3 volt. Is that clear? So this is called the 1.5 volt. In in um, we we call that the EMF. It's for historical question. But the voltage that you get here is 1.2 volt because that 5 ohms hiding in the dark is stealing voltage from you. You see? And what's happening, how come a battery, you know, get bad? It's because as they get older, the resistance here increases with age. It's like wrinkle. You know what happens? You get older, you have more and more wrinkles. And <laughs> oh, ex except in Miami, they have a way to deal with wrinkles, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah, I never seen that. I, I That was like, wow. <laughs> I, I should go with the flow and uh, do that to my... So one day, if you see me like this, you know, you will know why. But as it gets older, you, you, the, the resistance inside increases. And as you measure the voltage across the it gets weaker and weaker and weaker, and then you have to change the battery. So that's how it works. So you see here the battery, that's the EMF, that's the resistance. And you see from the EMF, which is 1.5, you're going to drop across the resistance here inside the battery. And then whatever is left is for the load. OK? So let's try to do this one. That resistance here, it's called the internal resistance. So it works the same with the car battery. You know how your car battery, you know, you, you are losing. That means the resistance is increasing inside. So you don't have enough power. You don't have enough voltage to provide uh, for the starter or, or, or the plug, plug spark. Okay, so let's try to do this one.
So you have a 12 volt battery, but here you have a sneaky little 10 ohms hiding. So that's your battery here. And then you have your load. Load could be your headlight. Or, or yeah, whatever you are using the battery for. So I is going to be 12 divided by 510 amps. So that's going to be 24 milliamps. Is that clear? But that's not reality, okay? That's just the trick to find I. So once you have found I, you take one step here, so 0 0.024 amps, and then you can find the voltage drop. Okay, so the voltage drop here, it's going to be 500 times 0 0.024 Oh, because I... no, it's not 500. Oh, I thought it was 510 here. No, it's 500 here. I did a mistake. So 12 divided by 500. No, it's 0 0.024. Okay. So here it's going to be. No, it was 510. Okay. Yeah, that's 510. No, no, no. I want all the decimal. Yeah, we need to keep everything. So it's going to be 0 0.02355. Okay, and now I can find the voltage drop here. So here I have 0 0.02353 times 500. 11 point, okay, 8. I agree with you, 8 is fine. So how much is stealing? 0 0.2 volt. Do you see? So it means instead of getting my 12 volt, I'm getting only 11.8 volt, right? So if you go to the car dealer, whatever, so if they put a voltage across the plus and the minus of your battery, is he or she? gonna find 11.8 volt he cannot or she cannot find what's going on inside but the the the, the car mechanic here can put a voltage and he will find 11.8 volt which means your battery has been uh, i don't know dying it's not providing the 12.6 volt or 12 volt that it's supposed to provide. Okay? But you cannot go inside and find that resistance. It's more like everything happens like you have a resistance because here inside you have sulfuric acid. So it's all the chemicals that behave like an internal resistance. It's not like something physical, okay? So tonight don't open your... Uh, car battery and look for it. I know it's not like a toy that is hiding. I'm not going to find it. Okay, so the voltage is 11.8. So the energy consumed in three hours, can you do that? So the 
voltage provided to the load is 11.8 volt. The current is 0 0.02353 amps. So the power consumed, that will be the energy per unit second. You just multiply, right? So 11.8 times 0 0.0. 2353 huh? 0.276 no I don't hear you 11.8 times 0 0.0 2, 3, 5, 3, 0 0.28 watt, which is joules per second, yes? So that means that in one second, you consume 0 0.28 joules. So in one hour, it's going to be 0 0.28 times 3600 so in three hours you multiply by three joules okay question Is that clear? Okay, you see that slide number, slide 73? Okay, that's going to be for next pop quiz. Just, just to put you on track, it's uh, you have two questions, so that way I only have to come up with another question. So it's going to be, uh, you see you have 12 volt and you have a little sneaky 0 0.01, that will be your battery. And then... And then you don't care, you have a load here, but you don't care about the load. Because what they give you is the current. Okay, so let's say the current is I. So you can find how much is stolen here. Okay, you multiply R times I. So you can figure out how much is available for the load and that's question a and then you increase the current to 100 amps like a, a car battery can provide 100 amps it's a huge amount of current and you can see what's going on for the load do you understand the question you have a load here we don't care how much the load is because you have the current so you can find how much voltage is being stolen by the internal resistance and then you do 12 minus that and you will have what is left for the load is that clear so that's for next time so that way i have two questions for my pop quiz i'm happy okay Any question? So this, um, the, the way of wiring, if you have three loads, like you have a toaster, and maybe you have a light bulb, and you have a radio, it's not going to work, because the toaster 
is, is to make heat. So it has a very big resistance. So it's going to steal all the voltage from the radio, from your laptop, from whatever, you know, lamp, right? And there will be nothing left. So you cannot wire loads like this. In a house, we don't do that. We use what it's called a parallel wiring. We put things in parallel. Why? Because that way, every load will get the voltage it needs. It doesn't have to share. They all have the same height. And the current going through each branch will depend on the appetite, okay, on, on the resistance. So I'm going to show you the... But you, you should play with that, okay? So here you see I have 30 volt. You're going to have 30 volt across this one. You're going to have 30 volt across that one. You're going to have 30 volt across that one. The, the, the current here will be higher, 1.5 because it has a uh, smaller, sorry, because it has a bigger resistance. Here it will be smaller, smaller current, smaller current. And all the current needs to add up to 7.5 amps. Okay. So you, you should play with it. And I will show you the math in a moment. So in... Uh, in a house, that's what is done. Okay, that's wiring in a house. So you have your TV, your stereo, the light bulb, and each load, each light bulb, each electronic gizmo is on its own branch, minding its own business, getting the all 120 volts so they don't have to share and sucking as much current as they want. So if you have a battery like a triple A, double A, you cannot drain as much as you want. You are limited by the chemical inside your battery. 